My advice to people who are struggling with this new normal and this, this rapid change that's been going on is to keep going through, uh, just keep pushing. It's hard, but we have to have something in place. Most people even tired with the phrase, the new normal. Uh, but when we think about it, why are we struggling with this term? New, uh, most of the time, is, is looking at something that's behind us, right? So uh, they're struggling with the term the new normal because they've been looking at it as a, as a past point of reference. And we hear it come out as, I just wish things would get back to normal. Or we're looking at um, the, 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 the next phrase of it is, is part of, I, I guess this is just our new normal. And in both those two ways, we feel as if things can't progress or we can do nothing about it. But new really means no prior point of reference. And if new is no prior point of reference, why are we using old things to put into a new type of environment to get a different result? It's the definition of insanity. Uh, we have to have this new normal mindset because normal is the everyday typical occurrence of a thought or an action. What are the rituals we have put in place that elevate us to a rhythm, that rhythm elevates us to a rise, which elevates us to the results that we want in our lives? The new normal, therefore, is not a destination at all. It's a plateau by which we are to grow. Yeah, I think the funny situation that I face when people are talking about uh, persons with disabilities is watching the reactions of others where I'm comfortable in who I am, but they are not. So I was in a gate waiting area in the uh, San Francisco International Airport. I was sitting there reading a paper, a newspaper. I'm wearing shorts, which had exposed my artificial leg. Two boys, about 20 yards off to my left, your right, uh, they're talking to their mother, their matriarch. And these two boys had made a new discovery. <laughs> and they're like, mommy, mommy, look at the man's leg. Look at the man's leg over there. There goes Robot Man. <laughs> and so I chuckled, <laughs> but I went back to reading my USA Today newspaper. The other funny thing that happened was everyone in the gate waiting area that was listening in on this conversation began to have this outer speak conversation, which really should have remained inner speak conversation about the two boys, five and seven, who just discovered a robot man. Shut them up. Get them out of here. Impolite to stare. I was like, wow, that's interesting. But I went back to reading my newspaper. Then out of the corner of my eye, the woman, she gets up and starts walking over my direction. And I think she's going to do like the old song says and walk on by. But no, she stops, leans in and says, excuse me, sir. My children, they're absolutely fascinated by your artificial limb. It looks like you've overcome so much adversity. You're such an inspiration. Would you please tell them what happened? And I think those are the moments that we have, the opportunities to open up uh, life to other individuals. The woman's a heroine. She took uh, a, a risk to come over to me. She didn't know what I was going to say. She, did, she was doing that in front of all these other naysayers that were there, about get those kids out of here. But she opened up an aperture for them to have a different experience. And I think that's what happens to us uh, in Dubai here in 2020 uh, for the expo and what we see at the USA Pavilion and the, and the rockets to the moon and the rockets to Mars and all these things that com come into our purview. But are people with disabilities a part of that conversation? Be we all know that there's 15% of the world's population who has a disability. We all know that this equates to, you know, uh, 1.2 billion people. We all know that this is, is $7 trillion worth of economic buying power. Do we want this for the future generations? We know that most people have a disability at some point in their life. I believe the answer is yes, but we have to see what happens forward as we bring and invite people to the table for the next expo to see how we can enlarge uh, our territory. I think that what the UAE is doing is fantastic in a number of ways. Uh, we see what they're doing with persons of determination. They had a whole year dedicated to it a couple of years ago. Uh, and we're seeing the build outs of what can actually happen. It's, it's, a, it's a fast moving track. It's a, it's a global leader. Why? Because we've seen what they have done in the last 50 years. I mean, we have the Burj Al Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, just within inside a 50 year. Who has a vision like that? And a lot of times when you have a vision like that, people become jealous of the, the, the person that has the vi vision. But we have to embrace what is going on to, to make the change, to see what can happen in the, uh, in, in the future. And I think that the United Arab Emirates has done a fantastic job in that. The, 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 what might happen next what uh, for people of determination is how can we make them more 
invited into the society, in, invited into the conversation. The last time I was here, I was talking to her, her Excellency Shama, who was the, the youth minister um, here in, in, uh, in Dubai, uh, in the United Arab Emirates. And one of the things that we we're talking about was these youth hubs that she has across uh, the Emirates. And I was saying to her, maybe, you know, a suggestion is visiting some of the people of determination around these the, the various Emirates that are here. Uh, could we have the goods and services that they are making, that we're buying and that they're selling uh, as part of the youth hubs. I think that would really increase not only the visibility of people's determination in the marketplace, but show that they have a higher value, that we, we understand that as we are dealing in, with adaptation during COVID, they've already learned how to adapt. Uh, and we can learn a lot from them. We take out our cell phones and we're on the phone or in the movie theater and we put it on silent and the light comes on. That wasn't designed for the movie theater and the light coming on for us to answer our phones and quiet. That was designed for people who couldn't hear the phone ring, those that had hearing loss. Uh, the texting was for those that couldn't hear a phone conversation, but we use it in classrooms underneath the table. Gotta, gotta talk and text to my, uh, my, my friends and my neighbors. Uh, so I think we can learn a lot from the disability community as well. And so what's the next 50 years look like, not only for the United Arab Emirates, but for all of us having people of determination at the table at the forefront so that we don't have to go back and do rebuilds on construction projects and have overruns because we forgot to include them up front. So I think that's what we were talking about with the next generation and how why I'm so excited about what we have right now in the United Arab Emirates. My advice to anybody whose life has changed uh, for one reason or another uh, is to keep on pressing through. Uh, embrace and, and, and mourn the loss of what has been lost, but then it's time to make an assessment. What is now the next for the individual? For me, People kept saying, oh, you've overcome the loss of your leg, John. You've over, you overcome so much adversity. You've overcome this and, and that. And I say to them, no, I, I really haven't. I haven't overcome the loss of my leg. Because had I overcome the lo loss of my leg, I'd have my leg back. But I don't. <laughs> I don't get back what is gone. That is amputated now. Even though I desire maybe to have it back at some point, it's gone. I don't get that back. So I have to release it. It's a reckoning moment that I realize I'm not getting that piece of me back. That doesn't mean that I don't have thoughts about it or even phantom sensations about what was lost where I can actually feel my leg or feel the pain from sometimes the amputation every once in a while. Just like we might have after we've made a commitment to something, we still yearn for that thing that, that has been lost. I, I desire to have that relationship back, but that's gone. I desire to have my loved one back, but that has gone because they have passed on. Uh, we desire that back and that shows up a phantom pain. We have to look to the forward, the, the, the future, and have a dream, uh, a vision that is so much grounded in truth we might not know the path to get there, but that truth outweighs the fear that we have of hold, that's holding us back. So when our truth outweighs our fear, we commit to a courageous life. We commit to courageous acts. I think what I would say, you know, for all of us is that believe that you are inspirations, that you are catalyst. I believe that inspirations are the catalyst to motivation. Motivation in turn causes actions. Actions, they lead us to transformational results and those results, they re-inspire us or they allow someone else that's watching the process to catch their vision. And so we say, I say it at Inspired Communications International, my kind of business profession, is that we want everyone to go forth and inspire their world. Why? Because go is our command, forth is our direction, inspire is our vocation, your, it's your work, only you can do this work, and then world because it's your sphere of influence. So go forth, inspire your world, everybody, and we'll see you at the next expo. But right now, it's on to Dubai because this is happening right now.